Well, it's on, but it's not very loud. Who's got that slider on number one? Hi, Jack. Uh, I'm here, but oh, that's that's good right there. But I don't want to be that close. Oh no, it's getting closer. <laughs> How's that? Okay, good. All right, so we're on now. Yes, we are. Okay, hi. <laughs> Praise God, everybody worship. <laughs> <laughs>
We have to come back to Earth for a little while. <laughs> <laughs> there they go again. What? The rapture didn't happen yet? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There they go again. There we go. <laughs> it was, she was from a um, uh, halfway house. And, uh, and they had a brother Paul, um, oh, who was that? Uh, Rothfell had brought Jewish brother. Yeah, they brought his whole halfway house to church. And this one girl had been there before. And so we were all worshiping and, you know, oh, we just like took off. And so she turns to the other people and she says, oh, don't worry about them. They'll be back soon. <laughs> of God, and you've never been anything like this before, it's just like, oh, yeah. you ready for the word of God this evening? Sure. Yeah, let's do it. <laughs> you are my hiding place. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. Good word. I could. I, I, I'm just now starting to come down. Can you hear me? Yes. Right. I lost my voice on that. We say hallelujah for a second. That's how I am. Sounded really good, though. Yeah. <laughs>
he tells his disciples this. If someone could read it, please. My little children, I will be with you only a little longer. You will look for me, and just as I told the Jews, so I tell you now, where I am going, you cannot come. <clears throat> a new command I give you, love one another, as I have loved you, so you must love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. Simon Peter asked him, Lord, where are you going? And Jesus replied, where I am going, you cannot follow now, but you will follow later. Peter asked, Lord, why can't I follow you now? I will lay down my life for you. Then Jesus answered, will you really lay down your life for me? Very truly, I tell you, before the rooster crows, you will disown me three times. Now, I love the Christian comedian Ken Davis because he tells it like it is. He says, we have this idea in the church, especially if you've grown up in the church, which I didn't. But if you've grown up in the church, you have this idea of the flannel graph Jesus and the flannel graph disciples. And the disciples have like the little halos over their heads, and they always speak to Jesus. When Jesus tells them to do something, they go, Loweth, Master, we shall do it as thou sayest. Uh, no. That was not them at all. They were just like us. So tell me what Jesus just said to them in John 13. Pastor. He had to give them the commandment to love one another because what he had seen for the last three years was probably not that. <laughs> true, true. Wow. <laughs> to, to follow an example, to do what he did, mm -hmm. what he taught. Indeed. But what did, he, what did he say about where he was going to be? That they can't come now. Yeah. yeah. He was, going, yeah, he was going, and they can't come. They can't come there. now. Yeah. And then he tells Peter, "No, you're not going to lay down your life for me. You're, you're going to deny me three times real soon." Now, remember that the disciples had this idea that Jesus was going to be the conquering Messiah, even though over and over again he said that he was going to lay down his life, that he was going away. It, he he didn't hint. Mm -hmm. They just no no oh no no I rebuke mean, that no 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 I don't want to listen to that. You have to be the conquering Messiah. You have to be the ones that come and take the Romans away, which means you've got to stick around. So where on earth are you going, Jesus? This doesn't fit with my theology. What is the problem? So they're just having a really hard time with this. And it's also important to understand that Jesus is preparing his disciples for continuing the ministry after he is gone. This is the purpose of John 14, 15, 16. Mm -hmm. That he's trying to get the disciples to have an eternal focus rather than the conquering Messiah temporal focus. You know, rout the Romans and we're all going to be happy and healthy and and prosperous on earth. And he is once again trying to tell them that he is God, but they're not exactly getting that. Mm -hmm. Those are the three things going on in John 14. So we're going to read all of John 14. It's 31 verses. So, you know, do five and say, tag your it to somebody. Do not let your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. My Father's house has many rooms. If that were not so, would I have told you? <clears throat> uh, I didn't oh, finish it. Whoops, yeah, sorry. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> <laughs> My Father's house has many rooms. If that were not so, would I have told you that I am going there to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me, that you also may be where I am. 
You know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we, we have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> Lord, we don't know where you are going, so how can we know the way? I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you really know me, you will know my Father as well. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. Philip said, Lord, show us the Father and that will be enough for us. Jesus answered, don't you know me? Philip, even after I have been among you such a long time, anyone who has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Don't you believe that I am in the Father and that the Father is in me? The words I say to you, I do not speak on my own authority. Rather, it is the Father living in me who is doing his work. Believe me when I say that I am in the Father and the Father is in me, or at least believe on the evidence of the works themselves. Verily truly I tell you, whoever believes in me will do the works I have been doing, and they will do even greater things than these, because I am going to the Father. And I will do whatever you ask in my name, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. You may ask me for anything in my name, and I will do it. If you love me, keep my commands. And I will pray to the Father, and he will give you another helper, that he may abide with you forever, the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him. But you know him. For he dwells with you and will be in you. I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you a little while longer. Keep on going. I don't know where I am because you're reading. It was a different translation. Oh, I'm reading the King James. So now I don't know. What verse are you at? There was one about orphans up there. This, this, I, was, I was up to 18, but I stopped. Okay. And y'all can read the New King James. Okay. I mean, the, the NIV. I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. Before long, the world will not see me anymore, but you will see me. Because I live, you also will live. On that day, you will realize that I am in my Father, and you are in me, and I am in you. Well, you want me to keep it? Go ahead, Paul. Okay. Whoever has my commands and keeps them is the one who loves me. The one who loves me will be loved by my Father. And I too will love them and show myself to them. Then Judas, not Judas Iscariot, said, But Lord, why do you intend to show yourself to us and not to the world? Jesus replied, Anyone who loves me will obey my teaching. My Father will love them. And we will come to them and make our home with them. Anyone who does not love me will not obey my teaching. These words you hear are not my own. They belong to the Father who sent me. All this I have spoken while still with you. Someone else? But the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name will teach you all things and will remind you of everything I have said to you. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. You heard me say I am going away and I am coming back to you. If you loved me, you would be glad that I'm going to the Father for the Father is greater than I. 
I have told you now before it happens, so that when it does happen, you will believe. I will not say much more to you, for the prince of this world is coming. He has no hold over me, but he has come so that the world may learn that I love the Father and do exactly what my Father has commanded me. Come now, let us leave. Thank you. Jesus says twice, do not let your hearts be troubled. Yes. The word for trouble is far more than just a little fearful or I'm a bit concerned about this, Jesus. It actually means to stir or to agitate like the waters are during a storm. Mm -hmm. um, it, in the hippie vernacular from, that some of us came out of, they were really flipped out, man. <laughs> they were totally flipped out. Yeah, and that's a drag, man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so why were they flipping out? I don't think they could put all they, this together. They, yeah. 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 They, they, had, they had their own concept. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, they weren't getting the Holy Trinity or the Godhead mm -hmm. and Jesus type of thing. They weren't getting that he's going to heaven, he's coming back, he's confusing me, I don't understand what he's saying. <laughs> yeah. And um, they're having a hard time. Mm. They are. They are. Anybody else? They were like, um, they, was, they, they were trying to um, be released. It, it, to me, it seems like um, Exodus all over again. He was being oppressed again and everything like that. He was trying to look for a conquering king to free him from the oppression of the Roman soldiers and everything like that. And they're thinking, this is the one. This is the one that's going to free us right now. But he was coming as a gentle lamb mm -hmm. to give him freedom and liberty, freedom from the oppression spiritually, and they were looking for something, a physical type of thing. Exactly. You know what I mean? Exactly. That, well, Jesus, if you're going away, when are you coming back so you can take care of this problem called the Romans? <laughs> you know, yeah. and they were looking at the temporal. They yeah. were looking at the problems exactly. in their lives. And Not Jesus, the spiritual part. You know, Jesus is talking yeah. spiritual. Yeah. He's talking eternal. They were and, probably like, what the heck is going on? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah. It, excuse me, you talked about somebody betraying you and someone left. Right. Mm. What's going to happen after that? You haven't even addressed that yet, Jesus. What is going on? You, you're going to leave. Is the Romans, are they going to come and take you away? Are the Jewish leaders going to come and arrest you? What are you talking about? And he starts with, do not let your hearts be like the waters of the ocean in the middle of a storm. Mm. Because that's what they were like. They, you know, he said he was going away after he said one of you would betray me. Really? Then he says, you believe in God, believe also in me. The word believe doesn't just mean like, oh yeah, I know that. It means to believe, to put one's trust in, to commit to. Jesus here is saying he is God, and they need to believe, trust, and commit their very lives to him, even though they don't understand what's going on. It's like, a, it's like faith. Mm. The only thing, they were seeing it. They seen the miracles. They seen everything that happened, and they still was like, Yep. And this is like a lot of us before we get um say before we see the Holy Spirit, everything's all gibberish to us. Then when we see the Holy Spirit, it start a revelation starting revealing. Now we're more spiritually filled and spirit, understand things more spiritually. Mm -hmm. And right now they were they ain't understand everything mm -hmm. spiritually right now because they haven't they've been he blew on them, but they haven't fully comprehend. The meaning of that right there. They haven't got there yet yeah. 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 That comes later. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so, and yeah. The Holy Spirit, for us, the Holy Spirit can reveal stuff to us. Mm -hmm. What something means where they didn't have that revelation. No. And, and so they're, they're trying to process the idea of the Messiah that they grew up with with everything that has happened thus far with and all, all of a sudden 
things seemed to be going south according to what they thought was going to happen. They said, we want another Moses. <laughs> free, free us from like this right here. <laughs> God calls us to the same thing. And this is something that God has been teaching me lately because, you know, my husband was always the strong one. Mm -hmm. And now my husband's having a really hard time getting over the cancer surgery and the cellulitis and the shingles. And the medicine. <laughs> and, the, and the medicine, yeah. And, and I'm going, well, Jesus, I didn't expect it to happen this way. <laughs> Right. But I still have to believe, Amen. even Absolutely. though I can't Always. see. Amen. You know, and, and do I know what's going to happen in the future? No, but neither do they really. Right. And so when God tells us the same thing, when he tells us not to let our hearts be troubled, are we going to agree to that, even though we can't figure it out? Or are we going to flip out? <laughs> I'll go I, back I, to Jacob's well. Yeah. I, <laughs> I've had times where I've been doing really good, and then when he started having a hard time with the medication, I was I'm getting online going, Dear doctor, we're having a problem. <laughs> and and I have to admit to you, I had one day that was really, really bad for me. And thank you so much for praying, because I know somebody was praying. Absolutely. I mean, you know, when, when your son says, I'm going out job hunting, <laughs> you know, you know, mom is not doing too good. But it's it's do I believe? Will I believe? Will you? You believe, even though things are not working out the way you think they were going to. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Mm -hmm. And then, mm -hmm. he says, you believe in God, believe also. And he's saying it again. You committed your life to God, you know, growing up. Now, believe, commit yourself to me. Mm -hmm. It's not going to be easy. Many of these disciples, I think everybody but John, gave their lives. Mm -hmm. It's not going to be easy for us either. We see things getting harder and harder. And I will admit to you, some of the things that people are upset about Christians for, they shouldn't be. And other things, we just should have kept our mouth shut because we really blew it, okay? I won't go into that, but some of the things that people are saying are deserved and some are not. And so what happens when people unjustly accuse you of something because you wear the label Christian? How are you going to react? Are you going to be troubled? Or are you going to trust in Jesus for the answer, or maybe that you don't say anything back? Maybe you just take it and just rejoice that you are able to suffer for the name of Christ because that's what the early church did. They rejoiced that they were worthy to suffer for the name of Christ. Wow. Yeah. Then he gets to, in my father's house are many rooms. I know that there are some translations that say mansions. Mm -hmm. And the reason for it is that they didn't understand the Jewish culture of a man going to add a room onto mm -hmm. his father's house. Mm -hmm. And so they saw many rooms. Oh, in Western culture, that's a mansion. Mm -hmm. You know? I'm just happy that I'll be in heaven. Mm -hmm. I don't need a mansion. I can live in a room with somebody else. I'm fine with that. But in my father's house are many rooms. Jesus is continuing the call for his disciples to be committed to him by talking about heaven with an example they could understand a Hebrew betrothal and marriage. 
Hmm. And in Hebrew marriage, the husband to be would ask the woman's father for permission. The girl didn't have a say in it. And if the woman's father said yes, at this point, at this very point, the woman would be committed to this man and no one else. And then the husband would go away to his father's house, where it came from, and he would build a room on his father's house for his bride-to-be and their soon-to-be family, hopefully. And as my husband often says, you know, men, you know, you just want to put up a few boards and say, okay, ready, let's go, let's have a wedding. And the father's like, no, 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 this is not ready for your wife and your family. Do better than this. And so the husband-to-be could not go get his bride until the father of the groom said, yes, it's ready. Mm -hmm. So the father of the groom says, yes, you can go get your bride. In the meantime, the bride is waiting expectantly. She had to be ready at any time. Mm -hmm. Get the picture? Mm -hmm. She had to be ready at any time for her groom to come get her. That meant if he came at 2 a.m., she slept in her wedding dress. And then he comes to get her, and they have the ceremony, which sometimes could last a week. And then he takes her in to the room that was built on his father's house. She was committed to him this whole time. He was committed to her this whole time. In the context of this, Jesus is saying that he is like the groom, and he is going away, and he's building many rooms on his father's house. And he wants his bride, his church, his disciples, to be fully committed only to him. And they have to wait expectantly for his return. And then when the time is right and the Father says it's time, Jesus will return and take us all home. This is what he was saying to the disciples. Be committed only to me. Yes, I'm going away like a groom goes away to build the room on his father's house. But the bride to be doesn't mess around in between that time. She waits faithfully for him. You wait faithfully for me until I return. Now, yes, people pull that out and they say those verses during a funeral. And yes, they're beautiful and, and they help people to grieve and you can certainly use them in that way. But in the context, he's saying, be committed to me until I return because I'm coming back. But their hearts are still agitated and stormy. Yes, my Is there something with like a bride price that has to do with that also? Make an agreement with the, the, um, the, the parents. The they draw up a, de um, a, a dowry. Yeah, they, yeah. they draw that up and say this and that, and I'll give you this, like that. The, par the parents of the bride. Yeah. yeah. And also, um, when they, a lot of people take this out, like when he said, wait for me, right? A lot of people think, well, I'm once saved, just saved, and I'm just wait. But you got to be about your father's business. Oh, yeah. Taking care of business, the preparation and everything like that. Because people thinking, well, it says right there, wait for me to, to I return. So you like the lazy servant, right? The master's yeah, yeah. away. Uh -huh. And no, 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 don't take that away. When he's saying, wait, be about, like, be committed to me. So be doing what I did already, what I was showing you. Because he said that and continue do greater, doing it. We will, we will do greater things than he. So obviously yeah. get to work. But see, a lot of people, a lot of people get saved and want to sit. Saved to sit. But you know, you're not saved to sit. You're saved to be fully committed, picking up your cross, being about yes. your father's business. I, I do know some people that think that now 
that I'm saved, I'm just going to sit around and... In my little comfy zone. <laughs> yeah, and, I, and I'll do what I've always done because I'm saved and that's it. Mm. Well, no, nope. you nope. need to be committed to him. It's exactly. not just a prayer. You need to be committed to him. Exactly. All right, so Thomas... When things sit, they oh. get moldy. Okay. <laughs> it's so true. You don't use it, you lose it. Huh? We have to throw that bread, bread out to the birds today. Oh. <laughs> okay. Come back. Okay. You went down that trail. So Thomas said to him, Lord, we don't know where you are going, so how can we know the way? Okay, it, it, in our vernacular, it's like, you know, well, I've got my ways out, but I have no idea where you're going, God. They're still stuck in the temporal. Mm -hmm. And Jesus says to them, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Now, who? Only God is the way. Only God is the truth. Only God is the life. So here he is again saying, hello, I'm God. I am equal with the Father. If you know the Father, you know me. If you know me, you know the Father. But they're still stuck in where are you going, God? Where are you going? So then he says, from now on, oh, no one comes to the Father except through me. Hmm. Where do they think the Father is? Yeah. Because <laughs> mm -hmm. he says, if you really know me, you will know the Father as well. Mm -hmm. Hello, here I am. Yeah. Here I am. That's what he was saying. I'm right here. Mm -hmm. But right here. from now on, you do know him and have seen him. I don't think he could have made it any plainer, but they're still stuck on where are you going. Even now. <laughs> to the word to know means to come to know, to recognize, and to perceive. He was saying, you haven't got it yet. You need to perceive who I am. You need to recognize me. I'm, I'm not just the conquering Messiah. I am God. And there are certain terms that were given to the Messiah, certain names that that really said, hello, yes, I am God. But they were stuck on the temporal. They were stuck on the conquering king. So Jesus is asking them to trust and to commit to him and say, with the Father, since they are one. And then Philip says, Lord, show us the Father, and that would be enough for us. Wait, didn't I just say? <laughs> But we do this too when we're confused. We do this too when circumstances aren't working out the way we thought. Or when somebody gives us a word that really wasn't from God and we hang on to it and then it doesn't work out the way that that person said. That's happened to me a few times. And you're confused. God, I thought you said. God, I thought you were going to do this. But it didn't work that yeah, way. Because people are people and God is God. Yeah, people yeah. People make mistakes. It's true. Even someone, um, <clears throat> prop, um, what am I trying to say? Somebody prophesies over you. It doesn't necessarily mean, you know, I mean, if it's if it's from the God, from God, it will happen. Yep, it will. But, but if it's not. You get confirmation. But the yes. thing is this, just because somebody prophesies over you, it would be confirmed with you because God already told it to you because that's why he that's called right. you friends. So there's nothing hidden right. that yeah. wouldn't be revealed. So if he told him, he would tell you. Yeah. He's not just going to tell yeah. him right. and not tell you. Yeah. Right. And then you'd be like, because the guy could tell you, yo, God told me to tell you go to Egypt. Uh -huh. So you're going to go sell everything and go? Or you're going to say, Lord, mm -hmm. let me see. I too have the Holy Spirit, so let me take it yes. up with the, with the Father Amen. and he would tell me this. And that's very important for us to do this. Oh, yeah. When the Holy Spirit in Antioch, when they were all meeting and praying together, and the Holy Spirit says, set apart Paul and Barnabas for me, the work that I have, they didn't say, okay, pack your bags, go. They went back into prayer to see if that was true. 
and then they determined that it was true, and then they acted. Right. Yeah. Isn't it? It's um. I forgot where in the Bible where um, the Lord told this one guy. I guess he was a prophet. To don't go in this town and take nothing to eat or nothing yeah, like that. Yes, yes, yes. And the guy, and then this other prophet went and met him, told him something different. The Lord, I heard from the Lord, and the Lord told me to tell you, come to my house and eat. Yeah, yeah. And the Lord said, if you go there and do that, you're surely going to die. But the guy took the word of the prophet without taking it up with the Lord, mm -hmm. and he lost his life. Mm -hmm. And that's showing us anything that is said. We take it back up with the Father. We just don't rely Amen. on that right Amen. there. Right, right. Because this Bible wasn't just written just to be written. It's to tell by like four shadows and it has no expiration date on a prophecy. It has no expiration date on God's word. So we need right. to rely on that. That's right. Amen. Mm -hmm. I, when I was a senior in college, God told me that I was going to marry my husband and my husband was going to be a pastor someday. That took 22 years, not to get married to him, to, for him to be a pastor. But this guy walks up to me in church and says, the Lord told me that I was going to marry you. And I'm, I come from saying, I don't think so. <laughs>
are just, it's like you feel like you're drowning. And you can't understand why God is doing what he's doing or allowing what he's allowing. And you start going through the checklist. Okay, God, did I leave open any doors spiritually? Okay, no, they're all shut. Okay, God, did anybody, you know, you start going, did anybody in the house sin? Has anybody brought anything in? What's going on? And God is just like, just chill. Just chill because it's not you doing the work. I mean, yes, we should shut all doors spiritually that shouldn't be open. But when things go wrong, don't freak out and start going, oh, that's it. What should, what, maybe it's this, maybe, it, no. Sit quiet, get in God's presence, and he will tell you if anything needs to be shut. Do it that way. Do it that way. Rely on the spirit first instead of the flesh. Amen. Amen. Because if you keep wondering why things are going the way that they are and you keep looking for open doors and freaking out, then you're going to miss what God is trying to tell you. And sometimes God sometimes will close, he'll close doors so that, yeah, he, yeah he'll close doors because so, you might get some pipe dream is something you want to do. And if it's not what God has for you to do, he'll put roadblocks in your way. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. it'd be like, well, what's going on here? Everything's going wrong. Well, it might be going wrong to your plan, but it's mm -hmm. not going wrong to God's plan. That's right. That's Amen. why the, the Lord says, man, think of the ways, but the Lord orders the steps. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. So get in step with God. Mm -hmm. It won't be easy, but it will be easier than you doing it yourself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So... He's trying to calm them down. He's trying to tell them he's God. And now he's getting to the part where he's telling them that they're going to continue the ministry because he is going away. He says in John 14, 11 through 14, Believe me when I say, I am in the Father, and the Father is in me. Here it is again. Or at least believe on the evidence of the works themselves very truly I tell you whoever believes in me will do the works I have been doing and they will do even greater things than these because I am going to the Father and I will do whatever you ask in my name so that the Father may be glorified you may ask me for anything in my name and I will do it so what will the disciples be doing Greater Pray. things than he's doing. Say again. Pray. Pray. And asking. And asking. They're going to be doing the works mm -hmm. that he did and even greater. Works. Why? Because. He's going to the Father and the Father will send the Holy Spirit. He hasn't got that far yet. No, we haven't got that <laughs> But I know that the next chapter. Yes. <laughs> because I am going to the Father. He finally tells them. I'm going to the Father. That's where I'm going. You can't come yet, but eventually, Peter, you're going to get there. Why will he do whatever they ask? So that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If we're not getting answers to our prayers, well, first of all, let me back up and say, <laughs> it's not point. you cannot pull these Verses out of context, and therefore say I can get a Lamborghini or whatever, because in James chapter 4, God tells us that he will not answer our prayers because he will not answer anything that will um, pander to our lusts. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Rough paraphrase. Mm -hmm. These verses about prayer have to do with doing the work of God so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. That is why you can ask anything pertaining to doing what God wants you to do, and he will answer so that the Father may be glorified. Sometimes we don't get answers to prayer because we want ourselves to be glorified or we want it for our own lust, or I've actually heard people pray against other people that um, they badmouth them, and so they 
kind of did a John and James, you know, bring lightning down from heaven, had them break lose their teeth. jobs, God, or whatever. Break yeah. their teeth. I've heard people. Yeah, break, break their teeth. teeth. Yeah. It's like, well, that's not exactly <laughs> literally what God means there, but, you know, you really should check your motives here. Mm -hmm. That's why we don't get answers to prayer, because our motives are wrong. And I didn't put this in there, but in, in Romans, you know, where it says that we need basically to, and now I'm going blank, so let me find it. It's, I believe it's Romans 12. How to do that, something's right on the tip of your tongue, and you start it, and phew, all the time. <laughs> <laughs> Why did I come into this room? Yeah. It's like from moving from selfish to selfless. Yes, yes. Exactly. And praying that people elevate even more in you. So like, say, a teacher. Teachers be glorified when they see the, the student excelling more than what they're doing. Yeah. And they say, well, I'm doing my job right. Instead of saying, oh, you shouldn't be ahead of me. No. I'm glad you're doing yes. better than what I'm doing because that means I'm doing what the Lord has told me to do. Mm -hmm. And what he's gifted me with, I'm gifting you. And we're going to pass that on. Then you're going to do it to your kids and they're going to pass it on like that. Mm -hmm. Are you talking about do not repay anyone for evil for evil? No. no. It's Romans 12, 1 and 2. It says, Therefore I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of you God's know. mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God, this is your true and proper worship. Mm -hmm. Do not conform to the patterns or pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. Want to know what God's will is? Don't conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Offer yourselves a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. That's how you know what God's will is. Mm -hmm. And as your will becomes his will, then you will know what to ask for in prayer. And then you will get the answer. It may not be the answer you were expecting in the way you were expecting, but you will get the answer. You will know what God's will is for that situation because you're being changed in the inner man. And then, and I didn't put this one in there either, but 1 John 5, 14 and 15, they drummed this one in us in Campus Crusade for Christ, which is now proof. This is the confidence we have in approaching God, that if we ask anything, listen to this next phrase, please, according to his will, he hears us, and we know that he hears us. Whatever we ask, we know that we have what we have asked of him. When our will is gone, when we want God's will, we will ask in his will, and it will be done. And when we get back to John 14, because we're doing the works that God wants us to do, because we're obeying him, because we're being transformed in his image as we're doing what he wants us to do in obedience, then we can ask anything. Can you imagine... You know, the disciples, when they went out two by two, and it's like, excuse me, God, you said I could do what? It, it probably freaked them out, but they did it. They did it when they went out two by two. And we can do the same. Whatever God tells us to do, if we are being transformed in his image if we are doing what he wants us to do and therefore we know what his will is then we can ask anything because we know it's his will and not ours you know it's a big hindrance and i think um 
we should step further than because we look at our circumstances. Mm -hmm. And he clearly said, abide in me, and I will abide in you. Okay. So as long as you're doing what I'm asking you to do, I will take care of everything for you. And a lot of us can testify to that, like, don't matter what you're going through. He said clearly, do my work, and I will take care of your circumstances. Because you're doing what I'm asking, and it's lining up with my will. Because you're not thinking about your needs or yourself. Mm -hmm. You're thinking about taking care of what I need you to take care of. Yeah. And he's going to take care of what you got to take care of. Amen. That's like the big intercessor. He's mm -hmm. interceding on our behalf yes, for is. our needs. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. And then his yoke is easy. Yes. 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 You know, burden is light. When, yeah. The burden is light when you're walking in his will. Mm -hmm. It just flows. Mm -hmm. Yes. But if you make like a, you make his work a drudge then <laughs> oh, yes. force yourself to do things that he's not even asked you to do Ouch. Um, yeah. he, he, you're going to mess it up for a lot of people because you're going to be a poor testimony <laughs> yes, yes. And you're messing it up for yourself and probably for your own family as well yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. and then we're not just obeying for us mm -hmm. or for Jesus it's for everyone who in our family who's watching As a us, testimony. people in the church, people who don't know Jesus. So it's important for us to be transformed in his image so yeah. we can know his will. Mm -hmm. It's important. And wow. Mm -hmm. You know, Jesus said this in Matthew 10, 7 and 8 when he said the disciples out two by two, and it's the same for us. Could someone read it, please? As you go, proclaim this message. The kingdom of heaven is come near, has come near. Heal the sick, raise the dead, cleanse those who have leprosy, drive out demons. Freely you have, freely you give. Mm. And the same charge. Mm -hmm. No matter what the circumstances, is the same for us. Tell others that the kingdom of heaven has come near. Heal the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the leper, drive out demons so that God may be glorified. And we're going to end here tonight, and I'll continue it in two weeks. You know, hey, Pastor Kathy, real quick, you see that the last part? Freely you have, and freely you give. Freely you have received. Yes. And freely you give, and that's not to be hoarded. That's freely right. you give yes. what he's given you. Amen. A lot of people pass by that right there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. you, you've you know, received so. his grace, you've received his anointing, and now give it out to right. others. Mm -hmm. Be good stewards. Mm. Yes. Yeah. That, that, that they may receive, and that... Uh, Signs and wonders will follow. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Who would, yes. I'm sorry. Who would like to close in prayer? <laughs> All I'm, right, Paul, I'm, I'm going to pick you. I'm teasing. <laughs> okay, dear Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for being with us tonight, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for teaching us from your word, Lord, and using Kat, Pastor Kathy to help us to uh, decipher your word, Lord, and how to go through it, Lord, and to uh, more fully understand it, Lord. Help us, Lord, in every day that we walk and with, with everything that we talk and everything that we do in this, in this week and in weeks to come, and, and that, that many more people will come, Lord, into your, into your kingdom, Lord, and more people will be saved, set free, delivered, in Jesus' name, and we thank you, Lord. Send us all home safely, Lord, and uh, until we all meet again, in Jesus' name, amen. 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 Thank you, everybody. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good. Thank you. Are we going to play that last song? Oh, if you yeah. like. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I didn't know if that particular one was Don't get your glasses. glasses. Yeah. He left him. Well, if you sit on this one. Get him. Oh, yeah. Okay, just sit on this one.
it's your you hey you saw it first yeah. it'll take an hour well yeah this is what they should have been oh yeah oh would you